Why hello there internet, I'm Connor from the Guild of Awesome and today I'm going to show you every quest in the Tribunal Temple questline in Morrowind. The Tribunal Temple is Morrowind's native religion, worshipping three different gods, Vivek, Alam Alexia and Sopha Sil. Our quest here will consist of healing people, gathering relics and fighting against the Sixth House. Before we begin check out the description for the timestamps for each quest as well as two links to two very useful maps. The first showing all of the fast travel links, and the second is an interactive map of Morrowind. There are some spells that we will need or find useful. Head to the temple in Balmora and we can buy the Mark and Recall spells. Mark will set a point on the map, and Recall will teleport you back to that point. So for example we will use Mark at our quest giver, and then once we have completed their quest we will recall back to hand in the quest. While we are at the temple, we can begin the quest line and join the temple by speaking with Feldero. He's at the very top of the temple. Asking for our first quest, we'll start our pilgrimage. We are given a book, The Pilgrim's Path, which will guide you on what to do. But you don't need that. I'm here. Head to the alchemist in town and buy some muck, a rising force potion and a daedra heart. You can only buy one heart at a time. We need four for a quest later on. You will be fighting against Daedra on our quests, so we can gather the other three on our way. Then head to the mage's guild and buy a soul gem. Use the mark spell by the silt strider and then walk southeast of Balmora. We'll find our first pilgrimage shrine, the Fields of Camus. Don't eat a piece of muck to receive the shrine's blessing. Recall back to Balmora and silt ride over to Vivek. Head to the temple and donate the Rising Force potion to receive its blessing. Head further up the temple to find another shrine and we need to donate 100 gold. There's yet another shrine hidden inside Vivek's temple. Enter through one of the grates on level 3 and inside we can enter the shrine room. This one has a bit of a trick to it. Interacting with the shrine tells us to bathe in the waters of his glory. We need to drown ourselves in the water here. We won't be killed, instead we awake in a new section of the shrine that has appeared. Don't kill the Demora here, instead take the silver longsword from the chest next to him and give him the sword. The point of doing this is that he is your enemy, but he's unarmed, so fighting him this way is dishonourable. Giving him the sword proves you have courtesy. You don't actually have to fight him, just give him the sword to complete the trial. If you have been following this series then we would have already gotten the next shrine from doing the Imperial Legion quests. But if you missed it, take a silk rider over to Guinnessis and head into the temple. Buy a cure common disease potion and some draw wax. The wax is optional, take it if you don't want to kill a mini boss later on. Now interact with the column further inside the temple. Donating the Cure Disease Potion will reveal Vivek's Mask. Touch it to receive the Shrine's Blessing and learn a very useful Cure Disease spell. We will be using this spell quite a few times during this questline. Head slightly south of Guinnessis to find the Koal Cave. The Shrine is by the entrance. You can donate the Wax if you bought it, however we can get a unique item here if we kill the boss before interacting with the Shrine. The boss is very tough, but if we kill him we get a unique piece of armour after interacting with the shrine. Now switch right over to Ardrun, use the mark spell in the town, and then head southeast and shortly into the Red Mountain where we can find the last shrine. Drop any soul gems you don't want to lose, specifically Azura's Star, since the shrine will take a random one for your inventory. Recall back and head into the Aldrun Temple for our first quest giver, Tullus Velen. 
Our first quest is to show compassion to a Daedric worshipper who has contracted a blight disease. The person we need to cure is in a Daedric shrine east of Guinness, or west of Morgan if you have a levitate spell. There are enemies around the shrine, so save before getting close. We need to cure Bilfum, Grasher Gargs. The best option is to give her the potion we got when starting the quest. If you have the patch project installed, then you can use a spell. Otherwise, the quest can glitch. Our next quest is to give Elvil Bydron a reality check. He is saying that he's the Neovarine, which is hilarious because that's us. Take a Silch Rider over to Saran, and we have three options if you have the patch project installed. Option one is only available if you have the Disturbing Dreams from the main quest. You'll also need to boost his disposition to above 65 and you can just convince him. If you have the patch project installed, and you have progressed far enough in the main story to get the Moon and Star Ring, you can show it to him as proof. Lastly, you can just kill him. So if you check his inventory, you'll find an Ash statue, the same ones that the Six Health use, proving that he is a sleeper. So he's been having messed up dreams, causing him to believe he's the Neoverine. Recall back to the temple to hand in the quest. Our next quest is to visit another shrine in Margan. Take a Stilt Rider over and enter the temple. We are supposed to mimic what Vivek did, speak to Deed the Mora standing next to the rock and taunt him into attacking you, then touch the rock to complete the pilgrimage. Next we will go to Vivek for another quest giver. In the High Fane we can find Enderin, who will ask us to convince a local woman in the arena to leave town, as she has contracted the Corpus disease. At the arena, save before talking to Tanusa. She has the Corpus disease, so if you don't have the immunity from the main quest, there's a small chance you could catch it. We have two options, boost her disposition to 80 and just ask her to leave, or if you can buy a copy of Sironis Sermons from Vivek's bookstore, then you can quote from it to convince her to leave. You may experience a common bug where she just doesn't spawn. If that happens to you, enter the console command on screen to spawn her at your location. The next quest is quite interesting, so we are tasked with visiting the Sanctus Shrine at the very top of the map. The catch is we have to take a vow of silence, so we can't use the silt, mage or boat transports. There are a few strategies. You can go to the shrine now, use the mark spell, and then when we take the vow of silence you can use recall to go back to the shrine. The vow of silence will end once you've touched the shrine, so you can take boats back. Alternatively we can donate a rising force potion to the shrine outside to gain levitation for 24 hours then just fly to the shrine. Next, take a Silk Strider over to Molagmar and enter the temple at the very top for our next quest giver, Farah. His first quest is to cure a woman in Telmora. This one is very simple.
Take a few boats over, and she is on the north side of town. So where are you from? I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Next we are tasked with visiting the shrine on Mount Kand. It's only a short walk northwest of Molog Bar. Don't attack the Daedra here, as we need to talk to them to solve their riddles. The Flame Atronach's answer is lead. Next is the Frost Antronach. The answer is the sword. Finally, the Storm Antronach. The answer is the Orc. Don't forget to interact with the shrine. The path is hard to see, but it's left of the Storm Antronach. Next we are asked to kill a necromancer in a tower called Moaim. It's only a short walk southeast of Molagmar. You can find a necromancer at the top of the tower. Now we need to rank up to Curate. Don't start the next quest yet, as there is a few things we need to talk about first. If you have been following this guide, then you may have already done this quest to kill the leader of the Bernie Vampire Clan already. If you have not, then you have a choice to make. If you start the next quest, then we are given some equipment. One of the items is a belt of Balena's Soothing Balm, which when used will heal you for a very small amount. However, if you complete this quest before being given it, then the belt will be swapped for the Saint's Shield which is a very strong ebony shield that when used will give you 20 points of feather and restore your fatigue. If you haven't killed Raxi already, then it's up to you if you want either the belt or shield. If you have killed Raxi before this quest, then it completes straight away. To kill Raxi, you need to go to the clan's base in Galamdeus. If you have the prop loan indexes, then you can walk to Telesero and then teleport to Fallon Serrano, then just walk south. Or, if you don't have the indexes, you can may just teleport to Sidif Mora and walk west. At the base, head up to the top floor to find Raxi. If you haven't done the Mages Guild, then make sure to grab Gallo Rifaris' papers from the ledge above Raxi. Once you are done, recall back to hand in Farah's final quest. I am blessed to be at your service. Okay. 
Let's head back to Vivek for some more quests. The next being finding the Shoes of St. Rilms. One of the members of the temple had a vision revealing the Shoes are at Ald Sofa, a Dajic shrine slightly northeast of Vivek. Head into the shrine and we can find the chest containing the shoes behind the statue. The key to the chest is on the hostile NPC in the same room. The NPC also has three sanguine artifacts. We need to collect all of them for a Morag Tong quest. We can also find another hostile NPC called Severa. She also has three sanguine items. Next, we need to wipe out the members of Vivek's local Shiogoroth worshippers. You may have done this already as part of the Daedric quest, in which case the quest completes immediately. If not, head into the bottom of the St. Dillon Canton, and we can find the NPCs in a shrine in the canal works. Now we are done with this quest giver. May just teleport to Aldrun and head southeast to Ghostgate. Once inside, turn to the right to find the temple and speak with our next quest giver, Uvo. The first quest is to simply cure an Ashlander directly outside the front door of Ghostgate. Be very careful of his friends, as they may attack on sight. If they attack you, I recommend curing Azantus, then running back without hurting his friends. Complete the quest, and if they are still hostile when you leave, kill them. How wonderful. Welcome, Outlander. Next we are tasked with providing supplies to a hermit. The best way to get there is if you have the problem indexes. Head to Caldera and teleport to Rothran. The island is right next to the fortress, slightly to the west. If you don't have the codex, may just teleport to Sedif Mora, then take a boat to Dagon Fell, and then walk to the island. Speak to the hermit to hand over the food, then recall back. Flatter me with your attention, Outlander. Our next quest is to recover another relic, the Hair Shirt of St. Aralor. The relic can be found at Kogarun. The fastest way to get there is to silt ride over to Morgan, then walk northeast to the fortress. We can find the relic on a corpse just outside. Recall back and hand the relic over. I'm very happy to make your acquaintance. For our next quest is another relic recovery. We need to recover the cleaver of St. Felms from Turinulal. It's northeast of Ghostgate. Ideally, you can levitate over the mountains to go straight there. But if you have to walk, then you'll need to go all the way around the mountain. We can find the cleaver on a corpse in the bladder of Covis.
Recall back and hand over the relic. Uvu's final quest is another relic recovery, the Crozier of St. Lovis. This one is the hardest to find. It's inside Dig of Ur itself. Levitate up or walk around to find the entrance. It is quite far into the stronghold, we can find it on the corpse of Varus Befrimo. Recall back to complete the final quest here. Now head back to the temple at Aldrun for the final quest there. We will need to rank up the disciple for this quest. We are asked to kill Dagoth Fovon in Hasur. There are two ways to get there. You can either follow the path south from Algrun or search right to Balmora and then head southeast from there. Once inside the base, find the Dagoth in the second area and kill him. Then recall back to complete the quest. That's all of the main quest givers done. We just have the head of the temple left. Head back to Vivex High Fane and advance your rank to Diviner. Then speak with Enderin to get the key to Folar Sironis' room. Speak with Folar, who will be our last quest giver. He has five quests that will be setting us up to take over as the temple leader. The first quest is to donate four Daedra Hearts to a statue of Malakath. If you don't have any, head to Balmora and buy them from the Alchemist. You can leave the shop and wait 25 hours for the stock to reset. The shrine is west of Dagon Fell. Either use the Codex to get to Rothran and then head north, or may just teleport to Sedif Mora and take a boat to Dagon Fell then walk west. There are heavily armoured orcs protecting the shrine. You will need to kill them to safely interact with the shrine. Our next quest is to interact with the statue of Meru's Dagon. We have been to Al Sofa before, it's only a short walk northeast of Vivek. There's no requirement here, just touch the statue. Our next quest is to interact with the statue of Molag Bal, at Bal Ur, north of Saran. You may have come here before as part of the vampire quest line. All we need to do is touch the statue again.
Next we are asked to interact with the statue of Shiagorov. This one does have a trick to it, of course it does. Head to Aldedroth. If you take a boat, it's east of Dagonfell, or north of Voss. You can use the codex to teleport to Rothran yet again, and then head northeast. You may have come here as part of the main quest. If so, then the shrine should be safe to explore. If not, then you'll find the shrine being attacked by Ordinators. Ideally, you want to protect the Ordinator outside and speak to them. Say that you are here to loot the place and they will just ignore you. Head into the back of the shrine and then all the way to the top to find some friendly NPCs. We need to take the gauntlet, Gamble Puddy, under a pillow in this room. Once we have it, we can interact with the statue to complete the quest. We can also find another sanguine artifact here, and a hostile NPC called Domba. Now for the final quest, and this one is actually really easy. We just need to interact with the shrine at the top of Mount Asani Bibi, which is north of Mologmar. Finally, hand that quest in to become the head of the temple. We are not quite done yet. As for all the relics we have been recovering, we can actually ask for them back. We have the Shoes of St. Rims from Enderin. And then there's the free relics from Uvu. And that's everything for the Tribunal Temple. I'm not sure what I'll be covering next time, but I am looking forward to it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.